today we're going to be going over the top 10 most powerful heroes here in call of dragons this has probably been my most requested video for call of dragons because a lot of players want to know where should they be spending their resources here in the game you only have a limited amount of exp you only have a limited amount of universal hero tokens so where should you be using them here in call of dragons so let's go over that today now this video is broken down into two sections first i'm going to give you five of the epic heroes in the game that I think are the most powerful and then I'm going to give you five of the most powerful legendary heroes and this is because for one there's a lot of free-to-play players who are going to find a lot of value in the epic heroes and two there's not that many heroes in the game right now and so there's a good probability that even if you are pay to win or a whale you're still probably going to be using some epic heroes at least in the early game so that's why we're going to focus on both of them now first we have to define what we mean when we say the best hero heroes okay because some heroes are good at peacekeeping some are good at gathering and th they're apples in oranges you can't really compare the two for that so what we're going to be doing for this video is strictly ranking heroes based on their ability to fight other players in the world out here in the open field okay this is excluding things like rallies or garrisons because most players aren't going to be leading a pvp rally or garrison that's typically saved for your mega whales your krakens your heavy spenders let them lead the rallies and garrisons because that's going to give you the best results however in a large war between multiple alliances pretty much all players including the free to play are going to be fighting other players in the open field so that's what we're going to be talking about here in today's video now with that being said if you missed my beginner's guide to call of dragons i'm going to highly recommend that you check that out first there's going to be a link down below to go ahead and watch it and you can skip to the chapter where i talk about early Early game heroes but the TLDR is that in the early game as you're leveling up your city you want to focus a lot of your resources early on on the gathering and peacekeeping heroes okay this is exclusively the epics and the blues here we're not talking about legendaries because those are very premium tokens and very expensive if you make a mistake but for the blues and the purples in the early game focus on those again check out that video if you missed it and the final disclaimer that I want to make before jumping into this top 10 list is that this list is not going to include Lilia or Hosk or Indus and the reason for this is because these are heroes that you can only obtain in a specific way Indus is a hero that you're going to max out for free by getting her tokens in the trail store and this is the only place that you can actually get them Hosk and Lilia are both some of the best heroes in the entire game and I'm just gonna say that here before we jump into the list but the only way that you can get these heroes is by purchasing the honor bundles here you can see the $50 Lilia bundle here you can see what I assume is a $100 bundle for her and then you have the Hosk bundles as well and so are these two heroes some of the best heroes in the game right now absolutely yes but whether or not you get them depends on are you going to spend the money to do so or not and if you're not then there's no point in talking about them and if you are then yes you should max them out okay with that being said let's talk about the epic heroes first and coming in at number five on the list is Craig okay now Craig is I was really debating if I wanted to put Craig or Atheist here at the number five slot but I'm going to give a slight edge to Craig okay there's a couple reasons why he lands on this list unfortunately his fourth skill is relatively useless in PvP p but his other three skills and his expertise or his awakening skill as it's called here in the game are just really good on top of the fact that he's a marksman which you can see on on his rage skill means that his attack range is medium and whether you're a free-to-play low spender or whatever if you're attacking at a range you inherently have an advantage because there's a chance that the other players can't hit you especially if they're infantry or cavalry there's not really much that they can do here but Craig deals 600 skill damage factor to up to three legions so there's the target and also two nearby legions they take a reduced amount of damage but still this is 1200 skill damage factor if you're hitting the maximum number of targets which is a lot of skill damage for an epic hero if we take a look at his second skill this is boosted by 10 percent so you have a 10 percent skill damage bonus this not only applies to Craig but also the other hero that you're pairing him with and after you finish a battle you gain 20 percent March speed which is going to help you get away if you don't want to be attacked which spoiler alert uh Craig can 
can't really take that much damage so you definitely want to get away and this is really nice that it helps you his third skill here gives you 10 percent attack which isn't that great but you also gain 10 percent defense which is really nice however it has to be entire flying units so this is where you know it just depends on who you pair him with but typically you would want craig to be all flying that defense bonus is nice his fourth skill again is just for engineering this is nothing that great for pvp which is why when you're leveling him up you want to get the first three skills to five before you even unlock this skill and then finally his awakening skill says that he now deals 200 additional damage to the target that you were hitting and he's still going to hit the other two nearby targets for 300 but also all targets that take damage gain bleed which deals physical skill damage every second for three seconds that's 200 damage factor every second for three seconds that's 600 additional damage factor on top of the other 200 damage factor we got here so before awakening he was dealing 1200 damage factor now he's dealing a total of 2000 damage factor for an epic hero that is a lot of damage especially at range and i think he definitely belongs on the list moving on to number four we have alistair now alistair looks like a very vanilla cavalry hero but his stats are deceptively good if you take a look at his rage skill it says that he deals 600 damage factor to the target and two nearby legions so right out of the gate if you hit all three targets that's a total of 1800 damage factor remember how many requirements it took for craig to get to 2000 there was hitting a target two other targets there's a three second bleed here it's just you hit three targets for a total of 1800 it's insane his second skill here gives him 10 percent hp which is really nice and 10 percent attack so 20 percent of stats Craig requires that some of his stats are from flying here it doesn't matter what he's doing you're just gaining bonus stats which is great his third skill is actually one that you can attempt to skip when you're leveling him up so I would say get these first two skills to five then bring him all the way to four stars and unlock all his skills because the second one for the most part you want to skip this is just for rallies and typically you don't want to rally with an epic hero although in the early game it's totally possible that you may want to try it but for open field fights this third skill does nothing his fourth skill says that when he has over 50 percent of units which when you're fighting in the open field typically you want to retreat if you're under 50 anyway so for a majority of your fight assuming that you're fighting uh, attentively and properly you're gonna have this buff at all times it has a 20 percent chance to gain repost and passion when launching normal attacks so that's every single turn you're launching one normal attack each time there's a 20 percent chance of this triggering and if it does you gain 30 percent counter attack damage and 30 percent rage accumulation speed for three seconds this is a very powerful buff okay the counter attack damage essentially what that means is if people are swarming you okay if multiple targets are hitting you you're going to be dealing 30 percent more counter attack damage to all of those even if you're not targeting them which is a re it really punishes them for hitting you but also more rage here just means you're going to be popping off this very powerful three target rage skill more often which is Huge. his awakening skill says that cavalry units deal 10 percent more normal attack damage and take 10 percent less damage this is huge okay normal attack damage again is how much damage you're dealing every single turn to the target that you're hitting and 10 percent less damage is just really nice this is a vanilla tanky portion of this skill that just fits pretty much everywhere this is very good and he earns his tank role moving on to number three on the list here we have guanwin okay now guanwin she's really interesting in that one of her skills unfortunately does not do anything in pvp but in the early game her second skill dealing more damage to darklings is so good that you're kind of you're hitting two birds with one stone if you invest in her which is honestly even though this is a pvp list i am a little bit more biased to put her higher on the list strictly because of that because you're getting in so much value out of this second skill but what is she doing in pvp okay as a marksman she's attacking at range just like craig which is huge unfortunately she's not flying but she's still very good she deals three skill damage hits to a single target 200 200 and then 400 for a total of 800 damage factor her third skill gives 15 percent attack to her marksman and 10% March speed, which is very good. Her third skill says that if she has 50% of units or more, she deals 10% more damage, right? Which again, if you look at her third skill, you may be thinking, okay, well, some of the other epics we've seen here give 20% of tats stats. And here she's really only giving you 15 plus some March speed, but this fourth skill really makes up for it because 
10 all damage is really really good because this doesn't apply to just guanwin but also the other hero that she's paired with and as i mentioned with alistair you want to retreat if you're under this 50 percent mark anyway which is really good so you're gonna have this for the entire time that you are most effective which is i mean that's what you want but her awakening skill is really where she shines here because it says every time that you launch a normal attack you have a 50 percent chance to inflict poison to the target which deals 100 skill damage every second for three seconds but the key to this awakening skill is there is no cooldown now i suspect that this poison cannot stack on top of itself so if you have multiple guan ones hitting a target and they already have that poison debuff i suspect that it won't stack i haven't tested this myself and that's one thing to note about this entire list is that the game is very new so there's a lot of things that myself and other players just simply don't know but even if it doesn't stack a 50 percent chance of triggering is really good this is a nice damage over time which i love and if you look at her complete kits i would say that she may be dealing less damage than alistair or craig but keep in mind you can actually pair her with craig but again the fact that she deals more damage to the dark links in the open field just it's a two bird one stone she's a great investment especially in the early game moving on to number two we have alwyn okay alwyn is a really good epic hero here in call of dragons if we take a look at his rage skill he can attack at a very far range which is super good this is one of the things that made me want to put Aethys on the list but you can hit enemy targets from very far you deal 600 damage factor to that target and you ensnare them dealing another 100 damage factor every second for three seconds and also reducing their march speed by 10 percent so essentially this is as it says a snare it slows down the target so it's hard for them to get away but also keep in mind you're hitting them from a distance so if they decide that they want to start targeting you they're going to be approaching you slower because of this active skill and a total of 900 damage factor here is nice if we look at his second skill he gains 10 percent attack 10 percent hp this is pretty on par with the other epics we've talked about uh the hp here is especially good okay if we look at his third skill you take 15 percent less normal attack damage this is very important for very far ranged heroes because you don't really want to be hit and if you do end up getting hit at least you're taking less normal attack damage it adds a little bit of tank to Alwyn's army which he really does need if you look at his third skill it says when you are attacked you have a 15 percent chance to ensnare the attacker so here you can see another snare here which also deals a hundred damage factor every turn for three seconds and reduces the march speed by 10 percent so this is just essentially a 15 percent chance of gaining the second half of his active skill or free between this and the active skill you're just building up damage over time you're just chipping away at them from a very far safe distance which we love and then finally if you look at his awakening skill essentially what it does is it tacks on an additional portion to his active skill which says if the target is suffering from any other effects that deal mag magic damage all when deals additional hero skill damage of 200 so he actually already has another way to inflict damage over time here on his fourth skill but you can also pair Alwyn with a hero such as Lilia which on her active skill deals scorch damage okay 50 percent chance of a 200 damage factor every second for five seconds so you're dealing damage over time there this is a slam dunk pairing for Alwyn I would say probably Alwyn secondary but honestly the control tree is very good here on Alwyn as well in the early game I would say you probably can use him actually as as your primary hero later in the game you're going to want to put him as the deputy but overall one thing you'll notice about Alwyn is all four of his skills including his awakening as a fifth skill do something in the open field okay there's no peacekeeping here there's no rally or garrison there's nothing there's no restrictions to him dealing damage he's always dealing damage in the open field which is exceptionally good plus right now the far distance range with magic I think is very good especially for free to play players and that brings us to number one on the epic list and that is Waldir. and I think a lot of players who are paying attention probably suspected this to be the case Waldir, in my opinion is probably the best epic hero in the game right now for a lot of reasons that Alwyn is good Waldir is just as good if not better okay let's take a look at his active skill remember this is a mage hero which means he's attacking again from very far so if you want you can pair him with Alwyn as well but it says you deal 600 damage factor to a target and 
two nearby legions okay so right away that's three targets 1800 skill damage factor that is insane but he's also inflicting gloom on them reducing their attack by 20 percent for two seconds now this is a small debuff right it's only two seconds but if you notice the other heroes that we talked about have no debuffs this is huge for an epic hero to have a powerful debuff like this even if it is only for two seconds he's dealing so much damage factor that the fact that he also has a debuff on this active skill on this raid skill is insane looking at his second skill it says all magic units gain 10 percent attack and 10 percent of hp so this is on par with the other epic heroes in terms of number of stats the hp is very good here so so far we have an above average rage skill and an average amount of stats we look at his third skill it says waldir's legion deals 15 percent more hero skill damage if we look at craig he only gains 10 percent hero skill damage yeah he has some march speed but here you're attacking from an even farther distance than craig could so the 15 percent skill damage here is just insane his fourth skill is the one that i think is least exciting but still applicable is that when you take skill damage you receive a shield so there's no probabilities here this is guaranteed to happen when you take skill damage you get a 600 damage factor shield now this is a 20 second cooldown so this is a very long cooldown but again just like with all win all of his skills apply in the open field which you cannot say for most of the heroes in the game this is absolutely huge looking at his awakening skill here it basically just boosts the damage and the debuff which oh my god it was already a really powerful rage skill but now we deal 700 to three targets that's 2100 damage factor total which is the highest amount that we've seen for any epic here in this video and it increases the duration of that attack debuff by an additional second but it also gives a 20 percent march speed reduction this is crowd control this is preventing the enemy from leaving and it's three seconds this is an even better slowdown than the march speed reduction on alwyn and he's supposed to be crowd control but if we look at waldir he's just doing the same thing if not better waldir is almost a legendary hero he is exceptionally good i think he is definitely the best epic hero in the game right now and definitely a huge plus for starting with league of order with that out of the way let's move on to the legendary heroes number five i had a really hard time deciding between two heroes and those two heroes were both Thea and bakshi okay and i think that you know bakshi right now is not in my server so i can't say for sure i suspect bakshi may find his way on this top five list but for right now i'm gonna give it to thea because thea essentially is just a very generic hero that you can pair with pretty much anybody if you look at her rage skill okay she gives you a 1000 shield factor which is really nice and she increases your hero's skill damage by 15 percent and this essentially lasts forever on that hero until they cast a rage skill which means you probably want to use thea as your deputy because essentially your primary commander is going to pop their active skill then thea will pop hers which will give you that 15 percent skill damage and then the next time that a rage skill is popped you don't want it to be hers right you want it to be the one that's dealing damage so makes her a great deputy if we look at her second skill this is generic stats okay 15 percent attack and she takes 15 percent less hero skill damage this is very good a little bit of tankiness to pretty much anybody that she's with and generic attack stats if you look at her third skill it says 20 percent defense okay so we officially have more stats on thea than any epic hero we've talked about in the video but also when it's entirely flying units their attack is increased by 10 percent and march speed is increased by 20 percent so that is huge flying units you want to be able to fly away because typically they're not that tanky and they're attacking from a distance and if they do start to get targeted you don't want to be hit okay so the fact that you're gaining bonus defense and march speed is huge here but if this is all flying units we're talking about 45 percent of stats and this is i mean that's huge it doesn't matter what flying unit she's with all flying units are going to gain this that's nuts we look at her fourth skill okay it says when you gain a shield your attack is increased by 10 percent. so we got attack on this skill we have attack on this skill now we have attack on this skill we're just stacking a ton of attack but it's not just that every time that you gain a shield this will trigger so every shield further gives you more and more attack up to 30 percent so you have 55 percent of attack on thea and 20 percent of defense and 20 percent march speed that's a ton of stats for your flying units if we look at her awakening skill here it says that now her shield 
is not only applied to her but two nearby friendly legions so this is a little bit of support for the open field as well she's just giving these 1000 damage factor shields to other targets it's it's huge so when you look at her kit okay she's obviously very supportive she deals no damage okay she deals no damage she's just there to support your allies giving them shields and essentially give a ton of stats and skill damage to whoever the primary hero is going to be and that's why she's number five on the list moving on to number four we have Emery Emery's is a giga chat I love Emery's and I think pairing him with Alistair is going to be huge let's take a look at what he's doing okay he deals 1500 skill damage to a single target just vanilla damage just hits them like a truck his second skill says that when he enters battle he gains passion so there's no probability of this it's guaranteed every time you enter battle you increase your rage accumulation speed by 40 percent for five seconds now it's a 30 second cooldown so that is unfortunate but what that's going to do is it's going to start your rage cycle and cause you to pop those skills even quicker moving on to his third skill essentially he gives you 30 percent of cavalry attack and 10 percent march speed so right away a ton of stats on this single skill here which we love to see and march speed helps you get away if you are targeted moving on to his fourth skill all damage increased by 10 percent that is huge especially when you consider pairing with somebody like Alistair who gains 10 percent normal attack damage as well as the 30 percent counter attack damage this is a very powerful buff for cavalry but it doesn't end there because you also deal 15 percent more skill damage when attacking targets that have been surrounded so this is a really good opportunity to increase the damage you're dealing with this active skill not only for him but also for his deputy and the fact that the requirement here is the target be surrounded is pretty good because you can choose if you swarm a target or not by simply having more of your legions in the open field more armies hitting that target if you look at his awakening skill it says when attacked you have a 20 percent chance to gain passion increasing rage accumulation speed by 20 percent for five seconds if you already have passion it's removed and immediately gives you a hundred rage this effect can trigger once every two seconds okay so this is nuts because if you look here yes 30 second cooldown that sucks but his awakening skill essentially just gives him a second way to increase his rage gain which is wild and two second cooldown that's barely a cooldown at all now somebody does have to be hitting you so if you're chasing a target and you're not going to ever get this but still you're going to be gaining a ton of rage with emery's which means you're going to be popping off that 1500 damage factor over and over and over again and it's very powerful moving on to number three on the list we have none other than velen okay velen is essentially a legendary version of waldir okay he is another ice mage and he earns the title of legendary because his raid skill here it attacks from very far just like with waldir okay and it attacks three targets the one that you're hitting and two nearby legions dealing 1200 damage factor to each of them that is unbelievable 3600 damage factor here which is wild but also you freeze them reducing their march speed by 20 percent for three seconds that is ridiculous okay now of course each additional target takes less damage so it's not exactly 3600 damage factor but still this is the highest amount of damage we've seen in the entire video so far it is ridiculous his second skill here gives him 15 percent more skill damage and 20 percent march speed again when you're attacking from a far distance you want to be able to run away when you're finally targeted this is very good remember if you're pairing him with waldir which is a very good pairing he also gives you 15 percent skill damage so that's a total of 30 percent skill damage between the two of them and they're both dealing an absurd amount of skill damage it's ridiculous his third skill here says all magic units gain 10 percent skill crit bonus and 15 percent defense okay which the defense you really you really need here for the magic units because they are a little bit squishy and lord help your enemy if you actually crit with that active skill my god you're gonna deal and it's hitting them with a, a missile from orbit basically okay looking at his fourth skill it says when in battle you have a 20 percent chance to inflict magic defense break and freeze on the target which reduces their magic defense by 20 percent and their march speed by 20 percent 
for three seconds so again reducing their magic defense all that means is you're going to be dealing more damage especially if this hits during the active skill oh my god but just in in general you're dealing magic damage every turn so this is very good and again just like with Waldir, we see a huge march speed reduction not only here but on the active skill oh my god you you're literally freezing the target but but if we look at his awakened skill okay it says when you cast a raid skill on a target that is frozen you deal additional hero skill damage of 400 and remove the frozen effect so there's a little bit of a pro and a con here okay because when you remove that frozen effect they're no longer slowed so that kind of sucks but another 400 damage I mean oh my god as if his damage output wasn't high enough this is insane I mean this is a total of 4,000 damage factor give or take on this it's it's in practice a little bit less but this is just the most powerful I mean it's unbelievable how good Velen is and pairing him with Waldir I, I mean it's it's a match made in heaven obviously it's it's super good now before we move on to number two on the list I do want to mention one thing every single hero we've talked about so far in this video you can get for free from the tavern okay these are all heroes that you're going to get just by playing the game naturally um Velen does have right now at the time of recording this the daily bundle available so you can get Velen every single day guaranteed if you are a medium or low spender or even a whale obviously so that's another reason why Velen is so good is you can get a ton of his tokens relatively easily if you are spending which you're going to see a lot of Velen but also before we talk about number two drop a thumbs up on the video if you've learned anything or found this video useful so far and consider subscribing I've gotten a lot of really good support and feedback on these Call of Dragons videos and I really do deeply appreciate it so thank you and with that being said let's move on to number two on the list and that is Madeline okay Madeline is coming soon to a lucky spin wheel here in the game and she is definitely the best infantry hero in the game right now okay her rage skill says that she gains physical keen which increases her attack by 20 percent for four seconds and also gives her a 1200 shield factor this is the most powerful shield we've seen in the video so far unfortunately the attack bonus here is linked to a four second buff which is kind of a bummer I wish she got that all the time but still very good if we take a look at her second skill it says that she gains 15,000 bonus capacity so she's just bringing more troops to the battlefield than anybody else we've talked about in this video she also increases her physical damage 10 percent in the field so all physical damage is increased by 10 percent here if we look at her third skill she deals 15 percent more counter attack damage and all infantry units gain 15 percent hp so if more targets are hitting her they're going to be punished for that she is as you can see here a tanky unit okay she has the shield she has the counter attack damage to punish the swarms and she has the hp to stay alive in the open field her fourth skill here is where things start to get interesting because when her blessed blade that is her rage skill is broken okay so when she takes enough damage for that shield to break she deals a 300 skill damage factor to three surrounding legions so that's 900 skill damage which I know if you saw her active skill you may have thought that it wasn't very good but here this really makes up for it 900 skill damage aoe to three legions and that's every time the shield is broken really good stuff here awakening skill says that essentially it's enhancing this fourth skill so when that active skill shield is broken she still deals the same amount of damage factor but she gains resistance which reduces the damage she takes by 10 percent for four seconds so as if she wasn't tanky enough she's gonna further take less damage okay and the fact that she has an she is an infantry hero means that she's going to be dealing damage right close range just right up in front and center madeline is going to be your front line hero you can pair her with somebody like garwood uh to just gain a ton of healing and tankiness to make her even harder to take down right and she does punish players who try to do so and with that being said the number one hero that i think right now at the time of recording this i think the best hero in the game is kanara this is the first lucky spin hero that you get access to in the game she's a marksman so unlike madeline she's attacking at a medium range which is really good and if we look at her skills here everything she's doing applies in the open field now that's also true for madeline which is why madeline is so good and why she's so high up on this list kanara is doing the same thing here except instead of being tanky she's dealing a lot of damage okay so 1400 skill damage to a single target and inflicts a debuff decreasing all damage they deal by 15 percent 
for five seconds remember first of all very long debuff here second of all very powerful debuff here third of all she's inflicting this powerful debuff at range she doesn't even have to be close to that target to inflict it and this is after dealing a massive nuke to them that's huge second skill here says when in the field you gain 20 percent more normal attack damage and take 10 percent less skill damage this is very good okay first of all normal attack damage that's the damage you deal every turn those are the white numbers that you see you're dealing this at range which makes this even more powerful and she gains a little bit of tankiness here from the hero skills she's going to be taking the third skill says 30 percent of attack straight up vanilla stats tons of attack which means she's going to be dealing a lot of damage fourth skill says when attacked she has a 20 percent chance to gain physical repost and inflict slow on the target increasing her physical counter attack damage by 30 percent and reducing their march speed by 20 percent for five seconds again these are really long skills here i mean the debuff is five seconds that's long the buff here is five seconds that's long here we see no cooldown we see no cooldown for a 30 percent counter attack damage bonus now of course you don't really want to be taking a ton of counter attack damage as kanara anyway because she is a ranged hero but the fact that you're going to be really punishing them for hitting you if this pops off is huge and it's a really high probability for a, a skill that doesn't have a cooldown i mean oh my god finally her awakening skill here says that when she launches a normal attack you have a 20 percent chance to inflict defense break on the target reducing the defense by 20 percent for three seconds again no cooldown here 20 percent chance normal attacks are just the, the attacks that you deal every turn so every turn you have a one in five chance of reducing their defense by 20 percent this is a super powerful debuff here and if you notice again all these skills do something in the open field you're applying a really powerful debuff on the active skill and the awakening skill you gain a ton of stats plus normal attack damage plus counter attack damage i mean she's dealing a ton of skill damage as well the damage output on Kanara is absolutely ridiculous and it's at ranged it's it's truly she is insane she is an insane hero here in the game and anybody who invests in Kanara I think you probably will not regret it but she also has the control tree I mean oh my god the the benefits to having Kanara here totally insane because the soul siphon talent here essentially gives you a 10 percent chance of just stealing rage from the enemy at range which means you're gonna pop your active skill faster and they're gonna pop their active skill slower plus you have a chance to silence the target at range with this reticent talent here oh, oh my god Kanara is insane in my opinion the best legendary hero in the game right now so if you can get your hands on her you definitely want to guys this video was much longer than I thought it would be so if you found it useful or informative make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Call of Dragons players might see it also if you're new here consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Call of Dragons video comment down below your thoughts on this list as I said before this video is coming out right when the game is pretty much coming out I mean it's only been out for like two what two weeks now so this list is definitely going to change in the future and as we we all get to end game and test more things will shift around but I wanted to bring this video to you guys because it's been so requested so let me know in the comment section below what you think the best heroes are in the game I would love to hear from you with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace